Hello everyone, my name is Pierce, I also go by Ekpap on the internet. Today we are going to be working on my graphic novel. I guess I'm going to be working on my graphic novel, not we, but thank you for joining me today to see and check it out. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, go ahead and check one of these corners for the video where I talk about how I'm going to try, keyword, try, and make a graphic novel in three months. So without further ado, I think we should get started. I don't think me rambling on and on about stuff is going to help you guys at all see what I'm doing with this graphic novel. One thing to note before I do start. I don't have as much as I wanted to have at this point. I have a story, that's the key. I have some style designs down, not very many. And now I'm beginning to make a very, very rough draft of what is gonna be the first 100 pages. So, let's get to it. All right, I would first like to state that this is at like 3,000 times speed, so what you're watching right now already looks kind of slow. It was much slower than I had expected it to take. Each page took around 15 to 20 minutes to make, and that's with rough sketching. Like, th these are not even good sketches. This is bare bones, people represented by ovals and squares, and not even very well thought out dialogue it's just mapping out what is happening on each panel of course i guess this will naturally take a long time because each and every single one of these little boxes is a little piece of artwork and there's at least 12 per page i think 12 hold on one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven yeah 12 that seems like a right amount but I've been, I've been using Hayao Miyazaki's Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind. I'll talk more about it later. I've been kind of using it as a helpful guide as to how to lay out pages. If you look back on my first page, you'll notice that it's very square-like. And then after that, I start to add a little bit of dynamism to it by making the boxes more rhombus-shaped rather than rectangle-shaped. I like it personally. Maybe you don't. Um, if you don't, comment why, I guess. I will take as much feedback as I can possibly get because I'm still at the ideation stage. If you pause this video and read through the comics I am making and recommend a change, I will probably likely consider that change. This is my first graphic novel, so I have very limited knowledge as to what to do and what not to do. I kind of just have experience from reading graphic novels and then basing off what to do off of what I've read in graphic novels already. I recognize my dialogue's pretty clunky, I recognize my design's pretty clunky, especially right now in this um, planning stage where I'm just trying to get the basic ideas out there. There's likely a lot of stuff that's going to change. But overall, I'm not going to lie, this has been a very enjoyable process. I'll talk more about how I specifically planned out all this stuff in general in the second part of this video but this right here is just me trying to show you guys how I went about doing the initial planning phase and about a month from now I'll, I'll have a time lapse of me actually inking in real pages that actually look good again this stuff kind of comes in stages this is just stage one of a very long process of creating a meaningful story that not only is coherent, but is beautiful. I think that's what makes graphic novels unique. You can tell a story beautifully with pictures. And I guess you could include a little bit of poetic language with the dialogue too. It's like a movie that you move with your own brain. And I love movies and I love reading even more and combining the two into one kind of just seems like, I don't know, magic, pretty cool. All right, let's go on to the second part of the video. All right, so I filmed that a week ago, and a lot of stuff came up between now and then. I had a lot of homework, I had a lot of work. That stuff happens, but I thought I would share with you what I have done so far, because you just saw me making this in like the video, the time lapse. And I wanted to show you all the work that actually went into that, all the planning, because the planning is what took arguably a lot of the time so this is 
this is a lot of paper and this is all paper planning the story um, I tried really hard to plan the story before I made anything in the world um, one of my favorite authors author of the amulet series Kazu Kibuishi um, he once said in a meeting I had with him that one should prioritize story over world building. I realize that in a lot of my other like worlds, especially in my Dungeons and Dragons campaign worlds, I tend to create the world first and then try to make the story fit in that world. But I really, really wanted to have the world fit around the story in this case. So I didn't realize how hard it was to tell a story without a predetermined world. So I did a lot of story planning. This is kind of what ended up being like my timeline that led up to where we are now. But from that, before that, I had all of this ideation. I tried to come up with, the, I came up with at least five different story ideas before I landed on the one I had. And you can pause the video and read all this writing if you want to. Um, I even made a hero's journey thing, thinking that a hero's journey map might help me. It did a little bit, not a ton, but you know, that happens. There's this, some pre-story stuff that kind of made its way through, um, and then some more ideation stuff. After I did that planning, I gave myself some room to do what I normally like to do, which is make maps. This is world building at its finest, in my opinion. Tolkien, 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 Tolkien? I think it's Tolkien. Tolkien did it. Um, in Lord of the Rings and I think it's a great way to visually map out what's happening in your story So I made this map of the above and the below because this is a story my graphic novel is a story That takes place both above ground and mainly below ground in caves and caverns giant caverns that are the size of continents I ended up trying to go for a Hayao Miyazaki Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind feel so this book wonderful book highly recommend Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind if you open it up to the first few pages, you'll see that he has some maps here. And I, I do tend to draw in Tolkien-esque style maps, but I thought I would switch it up and try to go for a more Hayao Miyazaki style, which is what I did there. And I think it turned out pretty nice. Obviously, it's my first draft. There's probably gonna be changes made to it as I tell the story, but I, I can already envision my characters going from this town to this town and then to underground from this town to there to there and then making their way over here and then through the wilderness of the caves to there and then eventually trying to make their way to this this city whose entire purpose is to pretty much house criminals and the city is called Boar. You'll learn more about that if you read the graphic novel which I have yet to finish. <laughs> um, this is some of my style guide stuff. Some of this has changed now. Um, I have a lot so far, I would say I have changed King Rex's fang style, so they're no longer like curved down. If you watch the time lapse, it curves up. Uh, this is Ayla, the main character. There's a little, not very much continuity in these faces. This was me experimenting with the different face shapes. This is Ayla's mom, Evie. Um, again, not a lot of continuity. I was just experimenting. This is some more experimentation. This was the first map I drew, so I based my watercolor map off of that. This was a family portrait I drew of no father. Interesting. I ended up cutting out the face and stuck it in my notebook because I liked it so much. This is pencil sketch that I should probably finish. And this is the second map I made with the below ground. So obviously not as much as I want to have at this time because I was supposed to have all 100 pages planned out by the 24th of January. Right now, I am thinking of extending that to the 30th. That still puts me underneath my three month mark because three months is March 27th and I've been aiming to get this finished by March 12th. So I gave myself a, it's giving me a 15 day buffer. So if I mess up on my schedule, I do have 15 days to still fit it into that three months. Anyways, that's part one of making a graphic novel. I hope you enjoyed this video. It's a little bit more informative than it is entertaining, but nevertheless, I hope you gained something from it. I hope it inspired you in some sort of way. Hope you guys have a great day and peace out. Boop.